Hello, my name is Matt Dillon, and welcome to a review of Black Panther. I have a white shirt on, but the, the Marvel logo is in black. Also, I don't like this shirt because, first off, I thought I had Thor on it, but no, there's no Thor. Because I wanted to bring it for Thor Ragnarok, and I guess this is my whatever bonus Marvel shirt that I just throw on or whatever that. It was $5, I don't know. Forget where I got it. $5 or whatever, I don't know. Besides that, now let's get into Black Panther. So, I think Black Panther is a fresh take on Marvel movies now. The reason why, T'Challa is not like Tony Stark or Doctor Strange, how he's sarcastic and jokey. He barely makes any jokes in this movie. He makes some jokes, but I think he's not like quippy and stuff like that. He's more like Captain America, like Steve Rogers. Like a very serious tone person. And also, the villain, uh, Killmonger, Eric Killmonger, he's really good. He's one of the best Marvel villains, like, since Loki, I guess. Also, I think... Michael B. Jordan does one of the best performances in a Marvel movie for a villain. Well, I would say it's like Oscar worthy performance, probably. But who knows? Superhero movies never get awards. Now, Heath Thunder Joker did got a nomination for his performance from The Dark Knight. I think the only reason he got that award because he died, not because like The Dark Knight or anything. I think uh, Michael B. Jordan can get a nomination for this role, probably. Also, the music is really good in this movie. I think it's one of the best Marvel soundtracks ever. And also, there's like this violin melody throughout the movie, and I, I just really like the violin, probably. I actually do, actually. So, our movie opens up in the 90s with... So, it looks like some guys are going to do a heist, right? But but then, some guards of the Black Panther show up. The guy gets to know who they are. He says, like, I don't, I don't know that much, like early 90s or 80s or whatever, it wasn't like 92 up and up with, but yeah, he like, there's some weird guards or whatever, but those guards are from the Black Panther guards from Wakanda, since there's the guards, there's the Black Panther as well, which the Black Panther at this point is the tallest father, Chichaka, I think I'm pronouncing that right, Chichaka, and the guy that was like, trying to like, I guess, do the heist, was Tichaka's brother, because his name, actually. Yeah, so it was his brother, and he was just checking out on him, seeing what he's been up to. And also, Tichaka talked about, like, about, like, some people, like, not being loyal, and, like, about stealing their metal, the, the vibranium metal. And also, Claw, he's also, like, think, giving it to Claw? Think so, or helping Claw, or, I know Claw already stole the metal at this point. Tichaka says, about people not being loyal to Wakanda and stealing the metal and giving it out there. I think he said something about working with Claw, I think, probably. I don't really quite remember. But I know there's like other pure points of view about like about helping out people that's outside of uh, Wakanda, the uh, rest of Africa, and also the rest of the world with people that are like dumb. And his brother's like, I would never betray you, but the guy that he was working with is also Wakanda. So he was a spy. His brother was technically a spy trying to like find Claw, I think. One of those. And then his friend that he thought was from America was from Wakanda. And he also had that weird tattoo on her lips. Tatala's brother had was more vibranium. So next we cut back to, I guess, 2016 or something like that? Or 2017? Or whatever, whenever the war took place. People say it's like May, whatever, but because the news report says oh, the King of Wakanda just died like last month or a couple of weeks ago, something like that. So yeah, we're now in present time, and we see Tachaka, I guess, oh, trying to stop some like like poachers, not poachers, like, I guess, trying to stop bad people in Africa. But like the reason why he's stopping those bad people because his ex-girlfriend Nakia is there, and she was trying to do her own missions. Well, I guess, like, he interrupted her kind of mission and, like, said that my father's dead, can you please come back? I think this is where the, the music really kicks back in, to, you start hearing the music when they're traveling to Wakanda, which is in an isolated place in Africa that no one else knows about. It's hidden behind a bunch of trees through, like, holograms. They also explain that in that, like, opening, like, visually that Theodore wanted to separate it from the outside of the world uh, because of other man outside of the world. How they act towards other people. If you look at uh, American, like, I guess the slave trade history, um, was it, like, it, was it the Portuguese that were doing the slave trade? 
can't really remember, or something like that. Was it Spanish? Like, yeah, they were doing this. One of those were doing a slave trade. So they talk about, like, being separate from the outside of the world, and they, they also saw, like, the first Black Panther, now the Panther God, and, like, the meteor that hit the Earth. The asteroid that hit meteor, asteroid, whatever, that brought the vibranium, and then five colonies fought over and stuff like that, and yada yada. We have more advanced technology than anyone else out in the world. So, yeah, okay. So let's go back to the present time again. Now that Tiktala's father is dead, now, now he gets to be king, and they do this traditional ceremony where, like, the other five tribes. Well, there's also one tribe that's not a part of Wakanda, but they still know about it. They're also doing this in their initiation where he, he is king, but the other tribes can, like, challenge themselves to be king of Wakanda. And the other, I guess, three tribes deny this, but then, like, the tribe that's not a part of, like, a part of part Wakanda, but, but still in Wakanda, comes, and, like, the king of that, that I guess, the, the, not, the, not the king, but the tribal leader, M'Baku, challenged Tala in a fight for the throne. So in order to do that, they have to strip out the Black Panther powers away from the current king, so it can be evenly matched. It does look like an intense fight, and I heard that there are some people that say, like, I guess, about, like, the Black Panther movie being two movies. It does kind of seem that way. Though they did cut, like, his origin in half and put it in Civil War. This is like a different kind of origin movie in its own right. And this fight between T'Challa and M'Baku does feel like a little dirt actish in a way, if you could say it like that. But yeah, you know who wins because T'Challa defeats M'Baku and yada yada yada, he's the king now. So now let's get to our villain, though, I guess the real villain of the story, Eric Killmonger is at a museum, like, making a heist to, like, steal, a, like, a vibranium pickaxe that was, like, from Wakanda, but, well, first of all, he asked the, the museum lady, like, about the artifacts and, like, what parts of Africa they were from, and he goes up to the act, that pickaxe, and, like, like, whoa, where is this from? And I was like, oh, and she goes, like, something, 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 I don't really remember. But he said, like, no, actually, it's from Wakanda. You don't know nothing, whatever. A city that's high advance that you don't know about, whatever. And he's also working with Claw, and he, and he steal that by reading him. Also, if you see any Circus Claw arm, people say it's CG. I heard, like, like, earlier things that it was, like, CG arm, but it looks like a rubber glove to me, actually. Look closely, people. So let's go back to Wakanda. So they're putting the Black Panther powers back in from the heart-shaped herb. I forgot to mention that, that the Panther God was gave a fruit that was heart-shaped. To give the power to the Black Panther. So when he gives him the herb, they also like bury him like, in dirt to talk to the previous Black Panthers. Now also people can say that he might have the Soul Stone because he can do this. Like the the like the, the vibranium meteor right, had the Soul Stone in the comet or meteor. So yeah, he talks to the, to the answer to the guys. He also got his powers back, and um, he also like talks to his father about like I'm not ready to be without you, and yeah, it's it's sad. There's a lot of, like, father stuff in it when we get for deep into it. So now we jump to T'Challa's talk to that, his friend that I don't remember his name. And also, and also, I don't really like what he does in this movie. He's a traitor. <sighs> yeah, they're talking about, like, something. And then Okole contacts them and he, she said, We found Claw. That he found Claw and, like, he sold Vibranium from a British museum and now he's going to be in North Korea to sell that Vibranium to an American buyer. So, go to North Korea and stop Claw. So, Dutala goes to his sister, Suri. She makes stuff. She's also a pretty fun character. Also, she's supposed to be Peter Parker's age, I guess. That's why I've been heard with the announced well, the ages of these characters. She's also very jokeable. She goes, like, to his sandals, like, what are those? Which makes that, I guess, uh, well, that what are those kind of mean was, like, close to 2015. And this movie takes, does take place in 2016. Everything of the timeline is just, like, it, it should be irrelevant to, I guess, early 2016 or sometime around there or something like that. Because it's, everything is jumbled ever since that Spider-Man says, like, what time period they're in. Well, they did say it's after Civil War, so it should be, I guess, kind of relevant, or she just never really did that to anybody. She does look like she's always in her room and inventing new stuff, so let's just one slide, whatever. It was actually pretty fun to see it in a Marvel movie, which that meme is very outdated at this point. 
Uh, unless it's someone that could come back in the future. I doubt that. I guess she's like working with a lot of like nanotechnology because like those new painter shoes like like a, almost like a a, a sole, like, not like sole, a sole for like a shoe. You put on your feet, a shoe pops on, and she calls them sneakers because they're not like as loud. Very fun pun. It, it's also supposed to be, like a reference, like a Back to the Future, because she does say about her father showing those old Hollywood movies and stuff like that, and like, possibly James Bond as well. She also gives them a new suit that can like also work with nanotechnology, just wrap around them, with just just with a necklace and just pops on like that. That's pretty cool. And also, I didn't like just the new Panther suit from like the trailer shots because I really like the. The Civil War one, and then also when I saw he was getting a new suit that's like more like a skin like layer, but then when I found out what it does, it makes it much more cooler. I also like that, like, she calls her his suit that he invented, the one we saw from Civil War, ancient or whatever. Yeah, and her suit is pretty cool because it can like absorb kinetic energy, reflect it right back as like he gets more punches and punches and punches and boom, right back at you. So Team Panther goes to the club or reward her intel tell them Claw was going to be at, and the T'Challa sees Lieutenant Ross there at the club because like they were like, also like, scoping around the area about like who do we see, and like the T'Challa found <laughs> Lieutenant Ross and like, talked for a bit like something like you shouldn't be here, and like Ross also goes like you shouldn't be here as well. This is my mission. So Claw shows up and to to make the exchange with Ross and Team Panther also know this is a lot of like Claw's men like more. Than just like to like, have like a simple exchange, like it's almost like Claw expected like the Quandors were checking up on him, so that's why he had like a lot, a lot more guards with him or his posse, his crew, his entourage, as he stated. <laughs> or no, Ross calls him like, "Was this your entourage?" He goes like, "Yes." Very jokeable, like the Claw in this movie. So Claw's men actually do end up getting up. In the fight with Team Panther, or some exchange of uh, eyes set probably set them off. We do see a like, one take camera work from from Ryan Cooper's work. I at least I think it's a one take. It does look like one take, but during my first viewing of it, I thought it was a little like one take plus shaky cam. But then like my second viewing, it was, like I was like really mad about like when I first saw it. But then I saw it for a second time. It's not so bad actually. It's pretty decent. Not as bad as like my first saw it. Probably just need a second glance at it. So yeah, it does look great. You see Okan fighting and then Nikia fighting and then we got to Chitala fighting and he beat up these guards really easily so because like well there's minion. And we also get to see Claw's arm for the first time of like him using it. Like uh, you really look like your father and like sure Transformers or whatever. That's how Claw escapes. And then they get into a car chase with Claw and just trying to stop him. And also Suri has a device that if you put it on like a car or a plane that any kind that she can also pilot that from miles away. It's pretty cool. So she gets to be in a car chase with the rest of Team Panther. And we also get to see some of his kinetic energy powers or whatever. From the suit, really, I actually do like how the suit just comes on to him, like with that nail technology that he has on. Also, I forgot to mention, like that Suri, the reason why she invented this technology, so her brother won't like put his helmet fast on, like super fast, instead of a bullet going through his head. If he just has a nail technology, it just warps onto him. Bullet doesn't go through his head. So the Captain Claw, I also get rid of his metal arm too. That thing, classic thing. And then, um, Okole wants to bring Claw back to Wakanda. Well, Lieutenant Ross doesn't want this. It's his mission to, like, stop Claw and interrogate him and stuff like that. And yeah, there's a lot of disagreements between, like, oh, Okole doesn't seem to, like, trust outsiders, so. Now, I like, guess seems, like, right for them because they don't know that much about these outsiders, as outsiders don't know much about Wakandans. So, like, fair enough, I guess. Well, like, and then, like, Child's like, let Ross do his thing and stuff like that. Well, he's playing like a little device on his jacket. While Ross is interrogating Claw, he, Claw talks about like, you don't, you shouldn't like really trust these Wakandans. And it's like, no, I shouldn't really trust you. You stole all their metal they have. And he's like, no, I only stole a fraction of it. They have tons and tons. They've been mining it for years to keep from the outside world. Everyone thought El Dorado was in North America, but it was really in Africa. So, Ross is like not so sure about like what's this guy up to and is he telling the truth? While this is going on, Nikia is looking out the window and notice that this one van just keeps on circling the block and the, the block and the block around and around. She suspects something fishy so she goes to the security, 
see what's happening. Oh, do you know it? It's Eric Killmonger. Oh, I forgot to mention about his, his theme of like, it's like pop music. When you normally hear like a villain or like the evil side, it's usually this ominous tone, but not like hip hop pop music. It's pretty cool. Let's, let's make a small little note. That's really, that was really genius of Ryan Cooper to incorporate that into his movie for the villain. It was really, it was really smart, I think. So it's Eric Killmonger and his gang of goons trying to capture Claw. And he managed to get him back and like, not to tell out because he, he did absorb the Kinect energy, but I guess it, it reflected back on him and that's how he, they were able to stop him. Wait, he got him a rocket launcher. That's how he stopped him. <laughs> T'Challa did get a glance at, like, a necklace that Killmonger had and noticed that it's a similar ring to his ring. And also, General Ross is injured. So they bring General Ross back to Wakanda, like, because that's the only way to heal him. And, like, and T'Challa likes this guy. And he respects people and stuff like that. And he respects him. And that's why he wants to bring him and heal him. <laughs> I like when, like, when Zuri, like, when they're bringing him to the Zuri, it's like, another white boy to fix. <laughs> Bucky from that from Civil War. He's trying to fix his brain. It's called Scramble. So Tatala wants that Zuri. There's two names that are very close to each other. Suri and then Zuri. So Zuri is like that mentor guy that was that does the initiation for the Black Panthers. And he was asking about his uncle about what ever happened to him. He told him like the uncle's dead. It's like he saw a ring that looked just like his. And then he tells him the truth, that his uncle fell in love with an American woman, and also stole vibranium to help people outside of Wakanda. And his T'Chaka disagreed with this idea, and um, as um, his uncle tried to kill Zuri, T'Chaka killed his own brother, and left this kid father. This is a very emotional... Oh god, I, I think... I feel like very sad at this point, because, like, it's very tragic as well. And also that viol freaking violin comes in and nails that scene. It's, that violin is, works brilliant throughout this movie. Like, that violin, tones, melody, whatever, I just really like it. It just works throughout the entire movie with some things. It's just so, it makes it the mood more, like, peaceful and sad. I really love it. I just really like the soundtrack for this movie. So meanwhile, Killmonger and Claw and his, their gang are like trying to like I guess trying to go, go to America I guess, but Killmonger wants to go to Wakanda. Well, like, they got like a standoff between like, Killmonger and Claw because they have both guns. Claw has his Killmonger's girlfriend, partner, or whatever. It's like he doesn't really care about her. Kills her and also kills Claw and also going back to Wakanda, also offering up Claw as an entry to go into Wakanda. Because since Claw is a very one fugitive for the Wakandans, for me, this is where the movie really gets pumped up. Because like it's like WTF all around. And when like Killmonger is like in the throne room, and like all the tribes are like questioning this, like who is this guy? Who is this outsider? It's like impactful. It's like you're thinking about the process and like you knowing that like the Talos knows about like who he is, but no one else knows who he is. Also. Killmonger knows who he is, and he actually belongs in Wakanda. He may be an outsider, born in the U.S., but he's an outsider. Also, Ross knows about him and his, like, what he does about his military actions, and where he comes from, like, or what kind of school, like, in the military special op. So while they're wondering who this guy is, they're wondering, like, what do you want from this reward, or... He goes, like, I want the throne. Like, they're all like, what? You're crazy. He goes like, no, you guys know who I really am. And he's like, I do a better job than the, your king that can actually not bring in this criminal. And like, Tiktala's not having like, with this guy, he's like, take him away. And like, one of the trouble people like, ask him who he is, and then he starts speaking Wakandan. Make, and he tells them that he is the son of Tiktaka's brother. And then we get a fight between T'Challa and Killmonger. This fight is more better and more gruesome than the first fight that we've seen. Like, it is... It's brutal. So Killmonger actually defeats T'Challa and also kills Zuri because, like, during the fight, he's like, no, you shouldn't kill him to kill me because T'Chaka was defending me from your father that was trying to kill me. Like, I'll do both. Stabs him and also throws T'Challa off the cliff or off the waterfall. 
I don't know why, but before the fight started, he got, like, the, the, the spear that they gave him, and, like, this broken in two. I don't know why I like that. Just, he uses it as, like, a sword or a knife now. So while Killmonger seems to be, like, a pilot ruler, wanting to give, um, has, like, the same view as his father, like, wanting to help the people outside of Wakanda, people like, but there's also a right way of doing this and a wrong way of doing this. What he is doing is, like, the wrong way. Also, like, Nikia has this kind of idea, but I think she can do it the right way. To I get to that a moment when we, since Killmonger is now king, they also give him the heart-shaped herb, and he gets to talk to his father, which is also another sad moment. Like, and you can also you get to hear that violin, damn, and that freaking violin, that just, oh, really good. And his memories of his father, I like, want him to take him to Wakanda, and how he gave him, like, that tattoo that allows his access so, after he gets to talk to his father again, he wants to burn the heart-shaped herbs for no other king, which is kind of stupid if you think about it, because, like, what if he has a child, and his son or daughter can't have the herb? What? That's a little foolish, I think. It doesn't make you immortal. Well, Nikia actually grabs one of the herbs. She and Suri, and Suri's mother, leave Wakanda, or... Part of Wakanda to go to M'Baku, and also they bring Lieutenant Ross with them too. So they try to get M'Baku like to to fight Killmonger because they don't trust Killmonger, which they shouldn't, because he's doing evil stuff with the uh, Wakanda technology instead of the good stuff. So they go to M'Baku's and like <laughs> there's like a exchange of silly dialogue between M'Baku and General Ross about like. <laughs> About, like, oh, like, Ross is, like, trying to, like, I guess, smart mouth or, like, act, like, intelligent or something, like, acting, like, normal or something like that. And then, like, Baku says something about, like, oh, feed you to our children. And, like, no, we're joking. We're, we're vegetarians. But then, like, since we'll like, try to, like, make and Baku take the heart trait verb to, I guess, be an actual, like, rightful ruler or kind of, like, to save us from this evil tyrant, obviously, turns out. Some of his men found Utala in the river while he's unconscious, and they give him the heart-shaped herb to restore his strength. And they do that by burying himself in the sand or dirt. But in this case, it's snow, because they're in no winter climate of the Wakanda part. Also, they try to get Numbaku to actually fight with them, and then he like denies this when they're like trying to leave. So now, since we have everyone back together, they go back to the city of Wakanda, and also... Killmonger sort of releasing all the jets to places of where he can sell the weapons to other buyers that want these weapons of destruction, actually. If you think about it, it really, it really are weapons of destruction. So, Kutag returns, yay! And Okole sees, like, like the fight for the throne's not really over. And all the guy that can get out doesn't really care. Like, the reason why he doesn't decide with Kutag because, like, oh, since Eric Killmonger killed Claw, killed that guy's father, and that's why he's teaming up with Killmonger, even though like, Killmonger was working with Claw. I don't know. He's pretty stupid. <laughs> oh, whatever. I don't like this character. I like him in Get Out, that the guy that plays him. <gasps> he's a traitor. He's a dumb rhino, too. But it's dumb rhino like Nicole. So, Okole and Dora Mirage try to fight Killmonger, and then I can Get Out tries to fight Black Panther. Guards and guards fight. The Panther people, people are wearing Panthers, and also the uh, Killmonger has extra now, like necklace. I wonder if he rearranged that design because it looks like a cheetah for some reason. That was Suri's design and changed into like a cheetah. I'm thinking like it's supposed to represent the father when the father did not have like that design on him, like that gold jaguar design on him. But no, whatever, I guess he rearranged it or something. Something he did, did something. We didn't see that early on, so it could have been something else or not. I don't. So, Black Panther fights his friend, Get Out Guy, and Dora Monade fight Killmonger, and like, so Nimbaku comes and helps them fight. So, they help him. Also, Suri and Nakia try to fight him too, and she has like Panther gauntlets. Killmonger kills one of the Dora Monade, also defeats Nikole and the Dora Monade, and also defeats Nakia and Suri, and that's when um, the child comes to rescue and, and fights Killmonger, and then. Uh, he goes, like, down to the mining area where, like, the vibranium gets, like, weaker when, like, the train is passing by. I also forgot that, um, Lieutenant Ross is also, like, helping out, like, with 
trying to stop all those planes from like reaching places where they need to go, what kind of weapons to other places. He actually has a pretty cool scene with that air part. A lot of planes do actually try to like damage his like area where he's at and then he doesn't really care, he needs to get his mission done, try to stop the other planes from reaching weapons, whatever. Don't really care about that much. It's a good moment that he has, like, put me back in, like, whatever way the window was breaking and like, he doesn't really care, like, put me back in. The main thing is, Tatala versus Killmonger. Well, during this round two fight, he actually defeats him, beats him and, like, stabs him, and then, um, and then Killmonger talks about, like, his father always wanted to bring him Wakanda, because he, as I said, Wakanda has the most beautiful sense that he ever seen before. And then, like, T'Challa brings him out outside of the, of the mining area, shows him the sunset, because the sun was coming down anyway. It's really nice, actually. And, like, T'Challa says, like, we can try and save you, you know, if you want to live. <laughs> And he goes like, no, just throw me in the ocean like how the ancestors did when they were going through the slave trade. For some reason, I think T'Challa actually saves him from being like that. Like, that's what I think. I think we're not somehow to see him for now. I don't think we're done with him just yet. Even though it looks like we're done with him. But I think I don't think we're not done with him. They have that technology that could save Ross. It could save him. So I don't know if he would respect his wishes. He probably would. He looked like a guy that would do that. But I'm not 100% sure that he would. He is his cousin, after all. They are family, so more, more family to go around. So after all that, Tatawa brings her to America and like shows that where his father killed their uncle. And he bought that building, and also other two buildings, and he wants Suri to be like the ambassador for this new thing with the, what Wakanda is going to do. And that's the right step to take. Also, that end credit we saw, uh, Tatawa is talking to the UN about Wakanda and what they have, and they're like, what can you offer us? You're like a third world country, aren't you guys? Well, they're technically not a third world country. They hide the fact that they have advanced technology. They're not a third world country. They're a first rate country, if you ask me. They're a first, first rate, actually. It seems like Katala is going to actually give Wakanda technology to the right people, like the US and the British government. Use their technology to help people and not conquer anything. Kia also had this idea of like helping out people as well. That's what she was doing on her, like, personal mission, as she was doing early on in the film. See, this is the right way of doing this. What Killmonger was doing was the wrong way of doing this. See, you help out people, or people of their kind, outside by doing it the right way, not the wrong way. Like, not, like, being, like, all tyrants and, like, trying to, like, push down, like, another culture down, when, like, the idea is to work together with a culture. Come together, right now. <laughs> that works better with Black Panther than it does with just the lady. I'm actually pretty glad that you made your own soundtrack and like rap music and R&B music for this movie. It, well, it's pretty good actually, the music actually. I actually really like it. Yeah, this movie was really great actually. I really liked it. It was first great movie of the year. Also talking about end credits of Bucky. People point out that there was red, wet, and blue like on Bucky's like robe that he was wearing. Also, I pointed out, like, the curtains out when we first see them, like, they were, like, striped, like, the American flag, so, hinting at, like, him being Captain America as well. And also, the little kids were also calling him White Wolf. There's, like, a character that was named White Wolf, like, but he, Bucky it never became that character. I think he's a, like, a Black Panther character, so I don't know if he's going to be that variation of White Wolf or he will be Captain America down the road in the future. We'll, we'll see what happens. Huh, <sighs> so... My score is this! Also fan and critical score. Well, really, I really like this movie. It, first great movie of the year. My ranking of phase 3 Marvel movies right now. Civil War, Spider-Man Homecoming, Black Panther. That's how it goes. And I'm still, I think, it's Thor Ragnarok behind it. I think that's how it's going right now. But we're probably going to get Infinity War in front of in, in Civil War because, like, well, Russo Brothers. So, what did you think of Black Panther? Please leave a comment down below. Give me a like, it will help me out, and subscribe for more. I've been that good one. And see you later, moviegoers. That's really loud. That really is loud.